And uh, as we continue down this road of trying to make sure that we recruit and retain the finest men and women that uh, America has to offer, it's the two of you guys that uh, our junior officers, middle-level career folks continue to look to. Uh, you're providing the right kind of leadership that's going to allow us to retain those folks. So thank you for the great work you do. Um, General Petraeus, I want to go back to what uh, Senator Lieberman was talking about relative to meeting this uh, goal of 50,000 troops in, in Iraq by the end of August. General Odierno, as well as General Kukulo, have recently expressed some concern about the fact that we're going to need some probably buffer zone type troops, maybe a BCT in the northern end uh, because of the Iraqi National Forces and the Kurdish Regional Forces um, uh, issue up there. Is that going to be um, uh, a part of this plan that you're talking about from a disbursement standpoint, or that, are you, is, in, is this going to be some additional? No, this would be we're we, need? What, uh, our goal right now, uh, Senator, and we think we're on track mm -hmm. to do that, to achieve it, uh, is to reach the 50,000 uh, with possibly with some rescoping. Again, as was mentioned, possibly a 7th Brigade headquarters, not necessarily all the brigade's elements. Uh, don't need all those. What we need are, are headquarters. Headquarters matter enormously uh, when you're coming down because they are the engagement element uh, that is there, and particularly in an area where our contributions uh, as honest brokers and so forth uh, are important. Uh, that is seen as, again, an option that we're looking at. That no decision's been made on that yet. Uh, and again, the intent would be to do that within the 50,000. So it would be a rescoping of the force rather than an increase. Okay. Uh, General, the um, uh, two of the issues that we've had ongoing in Afghanistan are the rule of law or lack thereof, as well as the corruption issue in the government. Can you bring us up to date on both those issues, please? Well, the, the, uh, the rule of law, again, three elements of that, as always. Uh, police, uh, much more emphasis on not only training police, uh, but also on partnering with them uh, and insisting that before they actually put the uniform on that they receive training. Uh, and so this is all part of, as I mentioned, getting the inputs right and the concepts right. Those are among those. Uh, the detention side of that, the correction side, uh, we're working hard to, to help them. State INL does it with the Afghans directly. We're doing it with an element that will eventually be able to take over the detention facility that we have at Bagram, uh, a goal that we have for uh, early next year, uh, and that is on, on track so far. Uh, and then the judicial leg of the three-legged stool of rule of law uh, is an area that I think uh, everyone agrees there needs to be greater effort. There have been additional uh, resources and uh, partnering activities carried out with a, a special element in Kabul that has indeed uh, been uh, productive, supported by the FBI and DOJ uh, as well. Uh, and we think that is an effort overall that is going to need to expand over time, just as, frankly, we had to do in Iraq as well. Uh, with respect to corruption, President Karzai announced his anti-corruption campaign. Uh, there have been some uh, actions taken uh, to remove uh, corrupt individuals, uh, and there is no question that there need to be more. With respect to... Um prisoners that we have arrested and are being detained at, at Bagram. The president looks like he's committed to uh, moving down a path of closing Guantanamo. What are we going to do with all those battlefield combatants that we have picked up and are now being housed at Bagram? Well, uh, again, what we're doing with respect to those that are at Bagram uh, is indeed preparing a plan to transition control of that uh, to uh, an Afghan corrections force that we are training, equipping, uh, and will mentor and partner with. We won't just hand it to them and, and leave. We will provide continued uh, partnering with them for some period of time. That's the plan uh, for what we want to do in Bagram. At this point in time, are you confident that um, we're going to be able to take those prisoners who are um, uh, comparable to the 
remaining prisoners that we have at Guantanamo and that the Afghans are going to be able to deal with them in a way that doesn't put them back on the battlefield either in Afghanistan or potentially in some other country around the world, including maybe the United States? Well, that is certainly what we're endeavoring to do. Uh, that also includes uh, rehabilitation efforts. It includes engaging uh, tribal leaders and, and mullahs uh, and families. Uh, again, as we did, frankly, in Iraq. And I might note that in Iraq yesterday, we transitioned uh, the Taji detainee facility. We're now down somewhere in the 2,000 to 2,500 number of detainees from some 27,000 that we had there during the height of the surge. Uh, and that is quite an accomplishment, really, uh, for those of our elements that have been engaged in that, uh, including at various times Colonel Lindsey Graham, U.S. Air Force, uh, but also the uh, very much the Iraqi security force elements that are in charge of that now. And again, we don't just hand off to them. We, we train, we equip, we mentor, we monitor, and so forth. I'm always concerned about the security of our country when uh, Colonel Graham is in theater over there. Um, the um, uh, glad path. Well, we're going to give Senator Graham an extra minute on his time to. Uh, <laughs> he needs more than that to defend himself. Um, the um, uh, glad path for um, troop strength um, uh, in Afghanistan um, and the collateral issue of training the security forces in Iraq. Are we? Are we on the right glad path? Uh, we're going to be able to meet that goal of, of uh, next year. All right, you're talking about Afghanistan? Yes, Afghanistan. Uh, um, in terms of the deployment of the additional forces, uh, we made the commitment to the President to have them all there by the end of August, with the exception of a division headquarters that's not needed by that time. So it's about 99% of the 30,000. Uh, we are on track to do that. I can tell you that Transportation Command, the logisticians of the world, and others have done absolutely magnificent work uh, to enable that and to also get their equipment uh, into theater so that they have what they need, obviously, uh, shortly after they get there or, or beforehand. Uh, that's on track. We're somewhere close to the 10,000 mark of the 30,000. Uh, it's, it's increased a good bit recently. Uh, and again, touch wood, that's on track. Uh, with respect to the Afghan National Security Forces, uh, we are behind a bit on the Afghan National Army side, uh, somewhere around 1,300 or so below the glide path that we need to be on uh, to take us to that additional uh, figure that we've, we've talked about out in the future for them. Uh, as I mentioned, the combination of additional Army and police uh, will, will be somewhere around 100,000 over the next 18 months or so. So clearly there's going to have to be uh, greater recruiting uh, and better retention on the part of the Afghan National Army. Uh, that's the, the goal. Uh, it is an important reason that Afghan leaders uh, uh, have to grip this, and that's exactly what they have done, as I think uh, Senator Levin uh, mentioned. And um, we also have to expand the training capacity there, and that's linked to the need for the additional trainers. There's, there's no question about that. And that is, again, part of General Caldwell's plan with NATO training mission Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Akaka. Thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. 